Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast, everyone. This is Bob Shoneman along with Pete Robertson. How are you doing today, Pete? I am doing very well. Very well. Actually, I'm doing I'm doing great outside of just learning that my uncle um, might not make it. And so he's uh, struggling with COVID-19. He's down in a hospital down in Vegas. And uh, I just got word right before the show today that it looks like he might not make it. But my cousin sent me a message. She said one thing that she's certain of is that she's going to be walking with Jesus. He's going to be walking with Jesus. And Amen. It, it's hard. I was really close to my uncle and, and um, it's hard to hear this. But when she said that, it just it brought me joy at the same time. It just hurt. But I'm doing good and um, we're dealing with that, but I'm doing good. So how about you? How are you doing? Man, it's been a it's been a crazy week. I mean, watching the news and just stuff going on. Uh, we had a couple of tropical storms. We had yep. that earthquake in in Haiti, which Man. is just I mean, thousands of people dead. Um, it's bigger. It's like it was seven point two. I think I think it's bigger than the one that hit what in two thousand ten. Yeah, right? it's huge. Yeah. yeah, seven. And then you know, to make things worse, two days later they get a tropical storm to, to right. rain on them while they're trying to clean up. I learned something <coughs> new. So I looked. So Haiti is on a is on the the Ring of Fire. I don't want people to know that. So when you think of Ring of Fire, you're thinking only around the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And, but there's a plate that extends from Pacific Ocean all the way to where the Haiti is and back. And it's a small little part. I, it's hard to explain, but there's a little section of the Ring of Fire that goes into the Gulf and the Atlantic Ocean. I didn't know that. I'm I didn't have to either. look it up. Yeah, I had to look it up myself. And I was like, how are they getting, how are they getting these things? So, yeah, that's the truth. You I mean, because we up. live in we live in Florida. It's all sand. There's, yeah. no, there's no earthquake. No, 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 we don't have North that. Florida and Georgia have little ones, but yeah, yeah we don't have any of that. And we then have hurricanes. And then you got Afghanistan, Man. where basically the country has collapsed, and you know, over the weekend, and people are trying to flee, and Christians, and I mean, just I just feel awful for the people there, and um, man, it's just it's just heartbreaking watching watching the news so. i was i was praying um i've been praying a lot christians if you're listening to this and in anybody that's a follower of christ if you're hearing this you know just stop what you're doing now and just pray just pray for them but i was i was the other day i was just praying i spent a, a good half hour hour in the morning just broken and i just was emotional and as I started praying, I, I just, it was really weird. I started saying, Lord, I just pray that you would send a, an army of angels into Afghanistan, into Haiti, and, and that you would just start ministering because it says that the angels are ministers, right? Yeah. And I just pray that you would just start ministering to them and start, you know, your mighty hand and your miracles that you would protect them and his love on them. And, and so I, that's what I was praying for. And so it was just pretty, it was really specific. It was surreal. Um, but we do make a difference. We do. We can stand in the gap for our our brothers and sisters and people that are suffering and struggling all around the world. And and you know a lot of people think, well, well how does prayer help or how is that? Well, I'm telling you, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And if you are surrendered to God and you're walking with God, you have a duty and obligation to be praying and standing in the gap for those. And not to mention that we can help with, you know, Samaritan's Purse is over there right now and, and helping. And I'm sure World Vision is a part of that, um, you know, and Compassion International are just certain ones that we can help with, you know, giving and, and doing that. So there's many things that we do, but the most important is prayer. That's, That's so good. Yeah. I f you almost feel inadequate at times. Like, what do I even pray for? But I, I love that. Just asking the angels that just, yeah. they, God knows what to do. Yeah. But just lifting them up in prayer is just it's just amazing. Yeah. But yeah, we've had uh, our good friend Rick's in the hospital with COVID. Yeah. Um, man, there's just uh, lots of just lots of prayer needs going going around. So um, no shortage of that. Um, what about good news? Any good news going on? I don't know. Speaking of COVID, though, I mean, it's it's it, apparently it's bad again. And, um, you know, we haven't talked about this too much on the show. But but again, I, I mean, our we're always telling people that, you know, be careful, be mindful. Uh, we're not going to pro vaccine against vaccine. We're none of that. It's you between you and the Lord and you need to really seek him and, and hear him. But more than anything else, I mean, just be respectful 
Um, honor God in all that you do. If, if they're asking you to wear a mask, then wear a mask. I mean, don't make it a big deal. Just bring peace. Love people. You have a, a duty and an obligation to 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 be a different maker, to speak life into people. And so whatever that means, when Paul was talking about I'm become all things to all people, he adjusted. He he did what he needed to do so that one might come to know who Jesus is. And so um, do that, you know, wash your hands, you know, don't, you know, don't be, get around infected people to go around other infected. And, and we're going to hear from, uh, Mauricio today, and he's a, uh, a survivor of COVID. He almost died. And so we're going to hear his story today. Um, and so it's, it's something that this is real and this is going around and, and, um, we just want to do our part as, as believers and, you know, helping out. So I don't know what's your thought, Pop. <laughs> You're smiling at me. <laughs> no, it's just a lot. Yeah, I I laugh. My fear with the masks is that I think too many people use it as a security blanket, and they think, well, I'm of safe course. because I have a mask on. Yeah, not true. And, yeah. you know, I, I go to Disney World, and they're back inside where you have to wear a mask. And yeah. you go, and this is gross, but you'll, you'll go to the bathroom, and people will walk out without washing their hands, yeah. but they got their mask on. Right. And it's like you're not doing any good so I, well, I hate for the math the mass to be this security blanket that doesn't work and you know we're on we're all on the same page i don't think anybody in the world wants to wear it and i think we're against it in per se but there are people out there that are dead for it and that's all they know yeah and so it's it is what it is so we just need to pray again that god's perfect will would be done in this but i think your point was just love on people yeah don't bottom line. don't use these things as you know, divisive, um, you know, <laughs> the devil would love that. Would love yeah. to just keep fighting with each other over yeah. stupid stuff like, you know, like that. But yeah. no, we, that's what I think we need to be. Really Let's not make with. this a divisive issue. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's what I was trying to say, but yeah. didn't have the words. That's good. So up front, I just wanted to remind you guys to, you know, check out our social media pages, um, you know, face, the, you know, the Riot Podcast on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Riot Podcast on YouTube. And don't, so I'm going to, you know, I always ask you to like and subscribe, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing this week. Share it. Share yeah. it with a friend, even if it's just one person. Um, share it with a friend. Now, on Facebook, if you share, you share it with all your friends. So that would be amazing, and we would really appreciate that. But it goes a long way. If you uh, you, know, you make a comment on something we said, and then you share it, uh, it goes a long way to spreading the, uh, the the podcast with other people. Not like COVID. This is a good spread. But... Uh, you know, it would really help us out, get the, get the word out, and um, you know, I mean, we appreciate that. A lot of people don't realize that we are listened to all over the world. And, and when we run our analytics and so forth, I mean, we on, on our YouTube platform alone, so we have as high as like 28,000 listeners on, on some of them. And, and they listen, but they're in like Bulgaria and the United Kingdom and all that. But when you share it and when you um, do stuff like that, it gives us an extra bump in the ratings. And, yep. and, and what happens is, is with, uh, with YouTube is they put on um, like their search engine when people are searching keywords that the more that it's shared and the same thing goes with Apple and Google podcasts, the more that it's shared, the more that their subscribers were able to be seen or searched more in, in keywords. And so it does help us that way. But more importantly, it, it gets the gospel out. You know, there's a, what we're doing. What? <laughs> yeah, it has a snowball effect. Yes, it does. It's like the more people that hear it, the more people get to hear it. Yeah. So it, it just it just amplifies. Yeah. So if you're listening, share it. Woo <laughs> <laughs> and then the last place that you can always get all of our information is at the riotpodcast.co. Yeah. Riotpodcast.co. So um, you want to introduce our special guest? I do. I do. This is a friend of mine since 2004. He's just been uh, a rock as far as a stable friend and one that we uh, we pretty much talk monthly. We've been, you know, there's been times we haven't talked a lot, but he lives in St. George, Utah. We're here in Orlando, but we used to live in St. George. We planted a church there down in 2000 and back in 2000 area, right? Uh, 2002, my wife's telling me. And uh, it's so we've, uh, we were there and, and that's how we came to know him and, and through that and uh, that transition, that process. But we've just, uh, I'm telling you, Mauricio is a man that's contagious. He's a man that impacts people around him. Uh, his personality, anybody that has, meet, has met Mauricio, they don't forget him. 
He is that person. He's the guy that you go to a restaurant and he introduces himself to you. And then you go back two weeks later and you ask, yeah, this guy came in. His name is Mauricio. And then, oh yeah, I remember. Every person remembers Mauricio. He is, uh, his personality is contagious. Uh, he has a love for life and uh, he just blesses the heck out of me. And uh, what an honor it is that we are able to have him on the show today. And I can't wait to just uh, have you guys listen to his story, how good our father is, how good God is, and how he's just uh, just met Mauricio right where he's at, right there in the hospital bed. We're going to hear his story a little bit later, but how he just, a miracle took place. And uh, we're going to share this. And it's almost, it's a supernatural miracle. And so if you're listening to this and you're thinking about jumping off, don't do that because you really want to hear what Mauricio has to say because it, it really did happen. It's true. He's going to share this and uh, I can't wait. So welcome, Mauricio. That long introduction, but man, we're just so blessed that you're here well i'm happy to be here and uh as you said uh i um i do have a story to share and uh, the lord's uh put it in my heart to to be his warrior and you'll find out why and uh and uh yes uh i've known pete and his family since uh our kids were very young yeah uh, we all went to church together uh <clears throat> until they moved from you uh, from utah and we spend a lot of time uh, visiting each other's homes, uh, cooking, uh, going on vacations together. And, you guys uh, did most of the cooking, though. Well, what's that? You and Janet are the chefs, man. You guys, well, I'm telling you, you guys did most I, of the cooking. I love to cook. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we spend a lot of good times together, a lot of laughs. Always. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm reminded of a story of when... Uh, we we're sitting around the living room after a nice long uh, dinner, and and my youngest daughter's probably twelve years ago. She might have been three years old, and uh, Pete's uh, youngest daughter is uh, about three years older. And they come walking out of the bedroom, and all of a sudden she's just covered head to toe with permanent marker and polka dotted, and 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 just um, we're going like. Uh, what just happened here? Uh, so little silly things like that were to, you know, happen. And of course, you know, the, the markers, uh, got faded off after about a week or so. Yeah. It took a while. I don't know. <laughs> Janet took care of that. But, uh, it just, uh, things like that are, are memories that are built. Uh, we went to Yellowstone together, uh, yeah, for about funny. a week and, uh, and we just had a grand old time and, and, uh, our, our families have been through some good times and some bad times together. Yes. And yeah. the only common uh, denominator has always been the Lord. Amen. The, the Lord has, uh, has always been something that Pete loves to have passion on. And yeah. that's, I think, part of the reason as being not such seasoned Christians that we love hanging around Pete and his family. <laughs> that's we, awesome. Go ahead. Well, let's jump, let's jump into the show. Uh, I, I want to give you the show title and then kind of open us up in prayer. But our show title today is going to be, How Do You Know If You're a Lukewarm Christian? So, mm -hmm. and, and then, man, we can't wait to hear Mauricio's story. So mm -hmm. before we do that, let's jump into, jump into prayer. Father, we, uh, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for our listeners. We thank you to everyone who's out there listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube, Lord. We ask that you would bless them, that, uh, that you would speak to them through this podcast, that, uh, you know, the, the stories and the, and the topics that we talk about, Father, that it would resonate with them and uh, maybe just hit a chord with them, something to draw them closer to you, Lord. So we ask you to be with the show now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go. <clears throat> let's go ahead and just do our opening statement. Yeah, let's and, do that. Uh, we'll get so, through that. Um, what happens when we try to have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world? What happens when we try to live for God and at the same time try to please people or even try to please our own flesh? People always ask, "How do I know if I'm a lukewarm Christian?" Sometimes a person is a new believer and is still trying to learn the ways of God, but others have known about Jesus for a long time. We say knowing about Jesus for a long time because if a person is living with one foot in the world and one foot with God, are they truly saved? Mm. The Bible says in Revelations 3.16 that straddling the fence is not acceptable. 
It says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. I can't tell you how many times someone has come to me and said, am I lukewarm? And what does that mean to spit you out of the mouth? Does that mean I'm saved or does that mean not saved? I don't know. What did you, what do you think, Bob? Yeah, I heard a pastor say not too long ago, uh, talking about that verse. He's like, you know, I, I don't know what Jesus means by, you know, or where I'm going to go when Jesus spits lukewarm up, but you know, it may be heaven, it may be hell, but I'm not taking that chance. So uh, I mean, my guess is if they're asking the question, they probably already know the answer. I agree with you. That's a really good way of looking at it. I mean, only God knows. I mean, he is talking to the church of Laodicea and um, it is a church. And so there's got to be people that are lukewarm, that are saved, that have given their life to the Lord, it would think. Um, but I would say that if you are if you are not fully surrendered to God and you're not walking with him, I think you're in you're in dangerous territory. And uh, if that's you, we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit that you're in dangerous territory. I mean, I, there's no way to say one way or the other. I wouldn't want to test it. Um, but there is a difference between like a backslidden Christian. Uh, a backslidden Christian is one that is fully surrendered to the Lord and they're walking with the Lord. And a lot of times I look at it this way. It's like a circumstance happens or a change of season in their life takes place. And the habits that they had before of walking with the Lord have now shifted and now changed. And the habits are no longer what they were doing before to be positioned with the Lord. And so now they slowly start falling away and they start, you know, doing other things and putting other things in place. Their hearts never change. They've never, they're lukewarm at that time, but their heart's still for the Lord. They've never really, um, you know, left God per se. Um, and they, you know, they, but they truly, they want to be with the Lord. They're just not positioning themselves to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. So I think that's where the prodigal son comes in. Um, we talked about that a few weeks ago where they, they, they go away, they, they live their life the way that they want, but their heart is always still with the father. They still ultimately are going to come back to the father. Um, it's just right now they're just living a life, but a lukewarm is this, a lukewarm person, the way that I see it is. Okay, you've given your life to the Lord, supposedly, but there's been no real change. You've, you've, you've come to church, but there's, there's no evidence that you've, you're still listening to the same music. You're still doing all the same things. You're, you're going to church. You still probably have a foul mouth. You're still getting drunk maybe on the weekend. You're still looking at porn or doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And there's really no change. There's, it's, the church is a more of a, like a medicine or more of like a, a make you feel good kind of thing. A religious activity. <clears throat> a religious activity that just, it, it feels good, you know, you like the music, you like what the pastor says, it makes you, pumps you up a little bit, it helps you, but there's really no change. You cannot, you cannot actually see a evidence of fruit. And so uh, I would say that I, I meet lots of those people every week. You know what that re reminds me of, Pete, is um, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7, where Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then he will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That could be the spitting right there. Yeah, I mean, again, so this a lukewarm person is like, hey, I prayed, I tithed. Um, I, you know, I asked for healing for people. Um, I did all of the works of, of God. Um, yes, but God's been, yeah, go ahead, Mauricio. No, I just said that you, you're describing me. You know, I did all the right things. I show up to church. I dress nice. I read my Bible every single Sunday. And uh, and so it's hard to tell what, whether I'm lukewarm or <clears throat> or backslidden. But all I know is that I was one foot in, one foot out. I, that that's the, the thing that you mentioned earlier. And yeah. yes, I mean, I read my Bible. I know I was born again 23 years ago. I know that the Lord brought me to my knees. But Satan always had a way. Of, of knowing how to entice me to say, well, nobody's watching. And of course, immediately after I go, oh, you know what? I forgot that Jesus and God is watching right. me all the time. Right. And so right. all of a sudden I go, I sinned against you, Lord. I'm so sorry. And I would go into the process of repenting mm -hmm. the best that I knew how. And time may go by. 
And maybe Satan goes, no, 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 no. That's a bunch of crap. And then reel me right back in and still reading my Bible every day. And so I don't know. Where do I fall? Right. Well, that's the question. I mean, and only God knows. But I know that you're saved now, and I know that the Lord met you, and I know that the Spirit of God is working in oh you. But again, God. in Matthew 7, so go if we go back to Matthew 7, 13 through 14, it says, you know, Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. And so there's a lot of people that are playing church, but they're not willing to go through the narrow gate. And that narrow gate is obedience. That narrow gate is turning from sin. That narrow gate is doing things that God asks you to do. And there's a lot of people that rather stay on that broad path. They, they want to be a part of that narrow gate, but they're much rather try to get there through the broad path where they can do it their way. They don't have to surrender. They don't have to change. They don't have to, um, you know, do the things that God is asking because they don't believe that God's way is the very best. So, I don't, Bob, any other thoughts on that? No, I think you guys covered that pretty well. But what I wanted to do was kind of give a, a list of things to look for. Well, let's do this. Let's let me write. Let me read this real quick. Yep. Francis Chan said, "Lukewarm people do not live by faith. Their lives are structured so they never have to. They don't have to trust God if something unexpected happens. They have their savings account." They don't need God to help them. They have their retirement plan in place. They don't generally seek out what life God would have them live. They have life figured out and mapped out already. They don't depend on God on a daily basis. Their refrigerators are full, and for the most part, they're in good health. The truth is their lives wouldn't look much different if they suddenly stopped believing in God. Wow. And so that kind of puts things in perspective. He went on to say that lukewarm people think about life on earth much more often than eternity in heaven. I mean, think about that. Lukewarm people think about my next vacation. They think about my, my, how I get a raise, how I get a different job, how I build up the house more, how I, all of that. That's their mindset. Their mind isn't on the kingdom things. Their mind's in how do I get the next best thing on earth? Wow. And every one of those statements use the word I. Yeah. They're not focused on others either. They're focused on themselves. Yeah. Go ahead and do that list wow. though. So this list will kind of share, like it's not all encompassed, right? No, so this is, no. I mean, you might have one or two of these. You might have three of these. You might have them and you don't know it. You might be just blind to it. And I, I believe that's true on a lot of these. Yeah. Um, but it, it kind of gives a nutshell of what a person that's living in a lukewarm state looks like. Yeah, right? we'll see if any of these resonate or, you know, with you or someone you know. Yeah. So here they are. How do you know if you're living a lukewarm, living as a lukewarm Christian? Uh, you mostly come to God when you have a problem. Um, you you think of him often, see him at work in their life. Uh, they do not think him often. Oh, thank you. Or see him at work. Right, in their I'm life. trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to change the pronouns. <laughs> they, they they got me. Uh, their Christianity is what God can do for me. How can He make my life better? If He doesn't do what they ask for, they get mad at God and ask why. Been there. Yep. They try to twist Scripture to justify their sin. Been there. They think they are Christians because they are because they do good deeds and go to church, but they live in sin six days a week and are holy on Sunday. Uh, wow. They compromise the world because they compromise with the world because it's the most popular choice. Even though on the outside they say all the right Christian things and the inside says otherwise. It's like I've been yeah. to people's church where, I mean, people's house, like they, um, and then I would just watch them observe how they were with their kids or how they are with everything else. And I, and I look at my wife or we're just sitting there going, hmm, are they saved? <laughs> you know? Hypocrisy, right? There's, we talked about that earlier. Yep. They fear hell, so they want to be a Christian to save them from it, but don't obey God's word. They mm. want fire insurance, right? That's it. They lack repentance. They are not truly sorry for their sins, nor do they really want to change. They say they're sorry, but are still not willing to let God change them on the inside. So it's it's like you got caught in adultery. So you say you're sorry, you know, they're wrong. You go back to your wife, you go back to your husband, whatever that is. And then, um, you know, weeks down the line or two months down the line, a year down the line, two years down the line, boom, you're right back into the same position you're in. And, it, you know, a repentive heart is like, God, I can't do this. I'm broken. I, there's no way I can change. Lord, I need your help. 
and, and, a, and a repentive heart is one that's just saying, God, help me. And then you're constantly in a position of prayer, of, of seeking God, of asking God for help, of, of doing things in such a way that the, the spirit of God then enables you to be able to get through your, your sin. That's the repentive heart. Yeah. That's the change. There's a big difference between being sorry that you got caught. Yeah and having your sin actually disgust you right yeah. and and wanting you to turn doesn't from it. mean the temptation is not going to be there the rest of your life it will it doesn't mean that you're not going to fall sometimes you will it, it just means that your heart is turned towards wanting to please god more than your your to please your flesh you're, you're disciplined in your body you're capturing your thoughts you're doing things in such a way that will allow you to have victory because god is now in control so good. We got a few more. They yeah. think they're saved because they compare themselves to others around them. Ooh, that's dangerous. Mm. They look at other church members who do worse than they do and think they're better. That's legalism. Uh, ooh. They <laughs> never or rarely share their faith. And if it did, and if they did, it, man, I can't read. It's it was okay. to make them feel like they are pleasing God to get something done. Again, it was out of religion. You're doing yes. it like, oh, it's a checklist, right? Yes. They lack intimacy with God and do not know his voice. The Bible does not come alive for them. That yet yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah. If you're reading the Bible and it's boring and you don't understand it, that is a red flag. It's it's one of the ways that, you know, I ask people, what did you read? I when I meet with people on a weekly basis, I'll ask them, what have you read and and how is God speaking to you? And when they say I don't know what it says or I don't know how God's speaking to me, that's telling me that they're not living a surrendered life. They're not, they do not have intimacy with God. And um, so there, there's something inside them or something that's happening that they need to shift. They need to change. They need to adjust because right now they're not hearing God and they should be. One more. They are not willing to make sacrifices unless it best fits their agenda or plans, which then wouldn't be a sacrifice, would it? Yep. They have their minds made up. I know lots of people like this. Minute, yeah. minute you have your mind don't, made up, they're doing it, nothing's going to change Don't give it. names, please. No, I won't. <laughs> 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 All right, Mauricio, what's your thoughts on those? Well, as I said, uh, I can relate to a little bit of each and every one of them because um, I walked in the flesh and uh, I desire so much to serve the Lord uh, and I would be going through all the steps, but uh, uh, I like to to uh, kind of not so much focus on that at this point because uh, I went through an experience uh, here within the last couple of months that has kind of like rocked my world, and that's really yeah. what I'd love to share. Go ahead, um, just just have you know, at it. I, Why don't you just start? Just yeah, said, I'm 62, 66 years old. I have a 22-year-old son. He's born March 6, 1955. Sorry. Th that was me. And then uh, yeah. um, 23 years more. ago, I was in my garage, dropped to my knees because there was a something similar to what you guys are doing. It's actually a radio show. It doesn't much matter. But all of a sudden, this pastor was talking to me and me only. Okay? And he says, do you sometimes feel like you're trying to do everything you want, you can to be a Christian, but you just feel like you're bondage with the Satan. And they said, you no longer have to be a drop to my knees. I'm crying like a baby. Um, I probably had just got done smoking a joint or something like that, uh, just to be honest. And um, and I, I, I gave my life to the Lord that day. And so in my mind, I had become a born again Christian. Was I? I like to think so, but life goes on, taking discipleship classes, learning a lot about the Bible, and within the last amount of years, uh, I fall to adultery, doing drugs, uh, lusting over women. Those are my, my demons that I've experienced in the last 20 some odd years. In the meantime, uh, I run my own company fairly successfully. Uh, I'm loved by a lot of people, as Pete had mentioned. And that made it even harder to be able to come clean with my demons with people because here I'm such a cool dude. And uh, and, and to, to come out in the open um, and to confess my sins and turn from them was really a tough thing to do. 
I was forced a couple times to be in that position, and I would go 99.9% of the way. And then Satan says, you can't have that last little bit. You're all mine. And I, I, I would uh, maybe not even be conscious of that, but that's what I found out where I was at. So kind of now for my story. Um, back on July the 4th of this year, I'm laying in bed, coughing, barely able to breathe. I'd been being nursed for the last three or four days prior to that with COVID uh, signs. I'd been tested positive, but I, I and other people in my life were convinced that it was going to be easy enough for to be taken care of at home. Well, my wife figured out that I was struggling with my breast. Called 911. Um, I was unaware of that. Uh, I Next moment I remember, I'm in this loading dock. Turns out to actually be the emergency room. But in my mind, it was a loading dock with all these people walking around with spacesuits on. And they come look at me, and they go, well, I don't know. And, and, I'm, and I'm just sitting there, laying there, actually, thinking, okay, last thing I remember, I was in my bed. Now I'm here, and people are saying, I don't know. And uh, next thing you know, I'm waking up, come to find out later, three or four days later, I woke up, and I am in a hospital room. I look across the wall. And there's a board with my name, the doctor's names, and all that good stuff. And all I think is, I'm alive. And all I feel is peace. And the first thing that comes, thought that comes to my mind, I have no fear. God decided to keep me. And next thing you know, my wife says to me, please don't die. Isabella needs you. That's our youngest daughter, who's just like the love of our life. And yes, we do have two other kids. And yes, I have a 39-year-old daughter. And we love them all equally. Seriously, I cross my heart. Um, but I found it kind of interesting that she said, your daughter needs you. So in my mind, is that's why Jesus or God decided to keep me. Not let me die because my daughter needs me. And... Uh, so I pondered with that, and, and I just kind of went with that. And that's, okay, great. I'm grateful to be alive. At this point, I have, I'm incubated. I can't talk. You have the ventilator so I quick, in. I quickly get this clipboard handed to me, and it became my, my new best friend with blank paper, and I'm scribbling the notes of, of uh, questions I have and, and what have you. And I really didn't have questions for the doctors right away but fast forward a few days later uh, they take the incubation out two days after that much to my dislike i was allowed to eat and my appetite was good and then i get word that my COVID struck my lungs and my lungs were 100 percent fried with this COVID tar and my lungs were were just in dust. Like and a prune. Had, what's that? Like a prune. Exactly. And yeah. uh, w w like a prune with tar on it. Tar so on they, it. Couldn't, they couldn't breathe oxygen out and uh, then I'm <clears throat> I'm told that they're going to soften my lungs up with, uh, with uh, steroids and they're shooting me up with steroids like every other hour and I thought great they're gonna put enough steroids in me my lungs will be fine I'll be out of here well it was a little more involved than that but um, as I uh, as a little bit of time went on uh, it was on uh, where's my calendar it was on uh, three weeks ago Friday so it would be uh, on, on July the 30th uh, after I had a lot of visitors and what have you, I received a visit from a dear, really hard, just a rock of a Christian 
Um, and he, it was about his fourth visit. And uh, we were talking and he proposed something to me to pray about. So I said, absolutely. And uh, he, uh, he left and my evening went on. And when I went to bed, I, I went into prayer. And uh, we all know that when you pray, then you wait for the Lord to speak to you. Well, another, another thing that I'm going to be honest about, I generally fall asleep before the Lord actually talked to me. I'm assuming he did talk to me. And it's all like, you know, like the book under your pillow. It's all going to sink in, right? <laughs> well, I was a little mistaken, come to find out a little bit later. But I go into prayer, and I'm praying about, you know, my family and, and other friends who are afflicted even as I'm afflicted. And, and uh, next thing you know, I'm laying in my... I'm laying in my bed, and the whole room turns into like a gray cloud. And this is one, two o'clock in the morning, and I'm laying you're there. Still, you're still in your room. There's still action and things that are taking place around you, and you're wide awake, and all of a sudden you just see this cloud or gray. It's like you entered into another world. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's almost as if I'm right thrown in right into the middle of a movie. Hmm. And I see this cloud and then I see this barrier starting to rise from the front and it looked just like the shape of a, of those barriers on the freeway when they're doing construction. Yeah. And but it is completely Difficult to tell whether it was black or gray. It's somewhat possibly irrelevant. Maybe it will make sense to somebody. But it's about, because it's about four feet. And it starts at one corner of my room to the other corner. So it cuts the room into two triangles. And I'm on one side. And this barrier comes up to about four feet, I would say. Somewhat irre irrelevant but tall enough to be a nice, solid, black barrier. And I have no idea what's going on, but I'm just, like, going with it. And then as soon as it's done and solid, over on the left, this little gremlin, I call it, or um, uh, I describe it as, a, like, an emoji, pops its head over the barrier, and I immediately say, no. What color and was it? It was it was like white outline with yeah. with kind of eyes and ears and, and just little lines all over it. Sure. And it goes down. And right beside it, and immediately after, a second one comes up. And then a third one. And <coughs> at this point, when several five or whatever amount had happened, I start to get what was going on. Those were all the demons that have been with me, not just in the last 20 years, but throughout my life. Things so the spirit I've of always, so the spirit of now? God put so the spirit put it on your heart that this is what they are, and you yes. were saying out loud no to each one of them. So when they each popped one, out, as soon as it would pop up, it would take like one second for it to pop up. Immediately, I go no. And, and I, you know, the hospital, they were very kind because I played music and, and I would talk on the phone very loud like I'm talking now. So no one rushed in to see what was going on. And mind you, this is one or two o'clock in the morning. And they had other patients that were much worse shape than I that they usually were in their rooms. Anyhow, I go, no, 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 no. Probably about 30. As soon as the very last one to my right was told to go away, I knew exactly who I was saying it to. I then knew that the barrier was actually representing temptation from Satan. Wow. And all of a sudden, that barrier started to melt. 
and ended up just being black liquid on the ground. And then I heard the Lord say to me, once again, I don't know what to tell you other than I actually heard the Lord say, now you are all mine. Wow. And that's when I realized that I could not cut my ties between Satan and I, but the Lord helped me through the affliction of having COVID. Wow. And then he says, and now here is, your, here is the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, I felt I'm laying in bed. I felt my body just puff up. And I can't recall whether I put my hands on my eyes or not, but I felt scales coming off of my eyes. And then the Lord says, now you are to glorify me and to worship me the rest of your life. Wow. And that's when I felt like, thank you, Jesus. And I had prayed and prayed and prayed that Jesus would cut the bondage between Satan and I. Yeah. And he actually helped me do that that evening or something helped me do that because I felt like I either had a little tiny string tied to Satan or a big ass rope like this tied to Satan. Now, at one point or another, I don't think that bondage between Satan and I was ever really, really, really gone. So maybe that's the night that I became born again. I don't know. All I well, know. But I only I do know because you did tell me a story right afterwards that you would read your Bible. So the next day you would read your Bible. So tell that story of what happened when you started reading your Bible from what happened in the past. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This was bizarre. And I, and I thought, is this just momentary? But I'll start with, in the morning, I just say a little, thank you, Lord, you know. And, and the only thing that I could think of is, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit again. And my chest puffed again. Mm -hmm. And then I always reach for my Bible, which is verse of the day with YouTube. Little plug for you, uh, you version. And... I listened to the little commentator on, on the verse of the day. I turn on the Bible, and I start to, to listen to it and read along. And all of a sudden, I understood every single word. I understood the meaning of everything. I understand. I, I, it, I can't say that I haven't read the Bible maybe eight times over. And, I, and I've been going to a uh, non-denominational church where all they do is teach the Bible. I've, I've read all this before. And I've always just allowed certain things to just take, okay, well, I may not get it, but I'm maybe not meant to get the whole Bible. Well, the Bible became alive. And I understood the story. It was as if they were speaking to me. And I, I think I've experienced that maybe six times in the last 23 years where I felt the Bible was actually speaking to me. But then I said, okay, well, let's try another, another uh, chapter. Boom. Same thing. And well, let's try something that's always difficult. Psalms. Boom. It says, and, and so the Bible has come alive. Uh, for me, uh, I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. Um, and a little a little story, uh, um, I thought, man, everything's going so good. Uh, a few days go by, and I thought, I haven't even been tempted for anything. And I know Satan's there. Well, that same night, I had got done with my dinner, a very nice full dinner. Kudos to the hospital food. Um, but then I started thinking about chicken salad. The chicken salad they have there is amazing. <laughs> and I started thinking about chicken salad. And so 
It's about 10 o'clock at night. They'll take orders up to one in the morning. I pick up the phone. I want chicken salad. And they send me the voice message. And I go, oh, my gosh. Chicken salad, chicken salad, chicken salad. And I look over, and I saw some crackers that my wife had brought me a few days earlier. I grab those crackers and say, if I can't have chicken salad, I'm going to eat these crackers. And I start dipping them with peanut butter she had brought me. And all of a sudden, I felt really sick. I laid down, and the Holy Spirit said, okay, so now you just experienced Satan tempting you with the chicken salad. You couldn't have the chicken salad, so you did whatever, and you just sinned against your body. Hmm. And I said, hmm. wow. So I am going to still be a sinner. Darn, I thought I had a, a free pass of not being a sinner anymore. Now temptation then, will always be there. Yeah. Then, 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 I, then I remembered we're all sinners. Uh, so it's a lot better to sin against that than uh, turn on my phone and, and go somewhere that I shouldn't be going. I, th and I so think that that, what you said, though, kind of it, it spoke to me in a way that there's um, there's a lot of times where I would be laying in bed and praying or just meditating or trying to go to sleep or something. And the Lord would reveal to me certain sins or certain things that yes. I've done that day. And I think, again, that's a testimony to the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is teaching us and revealing to us the very best way. And then in those moments of crisis or in those moments of uh, temptation is when God is saying he's, he wants us to learn to, to lean not on our own understanding, but to trust and acknowledge him in that, ma in that manner so that he would be glorified and that we would then have the strength to do what is the very best thing. Um, another thing that you said that really spoke to me, and this is something Bob and I have talked about a lot, is no. The word no has a lot of power in it. And uh, when there's temptation and when there's things that have happened just in my own life, I've learned to say no out loud. And when Satan is uh, coming against me or when there's the flesh is trying to lead, I would say no in the name of Jesus, no. And uh, it would then force me to change my course. It would force me to change my location, change what I'm doing, um, something so that I would not fall to that temptation. And so like in that case of the chicken salad versus the crackers, you know, I guess the spirit was saying in your heart that the crackers weren't the very best at that moment. So then you would just say no in the name of Jesus. And then you would then meditate on things of God. You would precisely, worship him Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. Because the chicken salad was the temptation. Okay. Yeah. And I couldn't have the chicken salad. So Satan said, hey, there's some crackers over there. And then I felt the temptation. And that's when it became a sin. And that's when I realized through the Holy Spirit, I, met, I left that part out. It was because of the Holy Spirit, because I was, I was laying in bed. I had asked the Holy Spirit to come in me, and it revealed to me what just had happened. Okay? Yeah. It, I'm not that smart, okay? Neither so, of us, none of us and are. Throughout the day, now I find myself, like even before now, I prayed that the Holy Spirit speak through me, not Mauricio, because he's cool and, and, and kind of handsome or anything <laughs> like that. Okay, it, it was, it's through the Holy Spirit. And that's where, who I want to live by now as well, my guidance and my direction, because God has promised that. And, uh, and it feels so good to be able to abide to his promises. Um, so to continue a tiny bit in my story of, of that evening, I woke up the next morning. And that Chuck Smith used to say all the time, always having to ask the Holy Spirit to refill me because I leak. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so I could feel the Holy Spirit when it starts to fade away, when I'm starting to, to just like take over. And I, I, I now find myself in the middle of the day saying, okay, Mauricio, stop, close your eyes, think of what's going on here, ask the Holy Spirit, and then boom, it refreshes me. And, um, and it's nice. It's a very nice feeling. Um, so during that next day of my vision with the Lord, a lot of things start to make sense. 
it wasn't that he left me here for my daughter. And yes, that is a benefit. But I believe that God knew that I wanted to be his warrior, that I wanted to be a good Christian. And then now he was giving me that opportunity, like a fresh start, like being reborn. And then shortly later that day, I started just going, whoa, giving him all the praise and said, thank you, Jesus, for afflicting me in such a way that this bondage has been let go. But more importantly, not more importantly, but at the same time saying, thank you for giving me COVID, letting me get COVID to be able to go through this affliction. And it, Pastor Rick is a friend of both of ours. Didn't he have a yeah. conversation with you and share something like that with you? Yeah, uh, when I shared uh, my story with, with Pastor Rick, he led me to Psalm, and I have it on my phone here. 71. Psalm 1, 119, oh, uh, verse 67. And it says, uh, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. And then verse 71 reads, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Wow. And that's exactly what I felt like when he quoted those. He's, a, he's, he's you know, he, he's been uh, my head pastor since. 2001 and uh, a very very godly man and here we're having conversation i don't know if he had his computer in front of him but he just threw those verses out oh, he knows the bible that well <laughs> and uh and so it, uh, many things are being revealed to me and and that's one of them that uh the lord needed to afflict me to the point and and, and looking back on on my previous sins you know so to speak it, it almost feels as if yeah i'm aware of what they were but they don't have a hold on me anymore Amen. A at least that's how i feel and now i know i need to be obedient to the holy spirit guiding me and directing me and uh it, i know that i have to do my part and i know that i still have to pray and I know that I still have to read my Bible, which is great because now I understand it. Um, and and so I feel completely reborn. And I don't think it takes an affliction for people like that may be listening to go through this sort of affliction and don't go and, and, and have someone that has COVID, you know, infect you on purpose. But... Going through this God thing for me has been well worth whatever I had to go through. And mm. people ask me, well, how's your business? How's your home life? Well, my home life just the week I went into the hospital, I had painters lined up, new floors lined up, new carpet lined up and things like that. I'm always the guy. I'm the guy that makes sure everybody does their job. And all of a sudden, I'm in a hospital room. I'm texting with my wife. I'm talking to my wife. I'm texting with the contractors. And my wife is like, I don't know if I can handle this. I said, honey, you got to. Everything's in motion. And you know what? She killed it. Absolutely killed it. In the past, I'd have something delivered, and I would ask her, well, did you get this or did you ask this? And she goes, I can't do anything right. That would always be her thing because she, she wouldn't go to the details like I do. I'm anal about that. And she just killed it. Uh, I, I was so proud of her. But that's once again, God at work. You know, uh, she's taking care of her 97-year-old mother. My mother-in-law lives with us. And our daughter is 15 years old, be 16 soon. She's like involved with all this dance stuff. And so she's coordinating all that. Her work led her off of. Uh, so, so back to the, so let's go back to the story here a little bit. Yeah. So 
you're so what's happening in your life is that there's a transformation god has met you exactly where you're at you still have yes. your bad habits you still have your old ways they're still there and and now it's a new life so now you're going to be learning how to not do it on mauricio's way you're learning how to do it god's way and, and in that is through the relationships, through your wife, you're learning how to let your wife do the things that she's going to do. You're trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to help her. The same thing with your daughter and, and your kids. And, and it's just, this is a, it's a whole new world. That's where they got that Disney song, right? A whole new world. It's a, it's, everything has changed. Everything I'm not sure about that, Pete, but yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's the AD and the BC, you know, it's like before Christ and now it's like after and it's like this, this bright light and, and, um, and, and it, it's exciting. You know, you also are someone that shares their faith a lot, but could you share real quick, uh, we briefly don't, we don't have much, much time, but could you share real, real quick, uh, the conversation that you had with your Muslim friend, um, that just really blessed me. And, and, and one of the things that happens when you're uh totally transformed and that the spirit of god just meets you is that it just all of a sudden talking about jesus just becomes real easy and and your conversation just becomes really natural and it just you just naturally talk to people and and things just happen because it's not you that's speaking it's the spirit of god so could you talk about just briefly about your conversation you had with that muslim friend and how that all took place and and it's just really fascinating i think that can help some people well, we have uh, we have some very dear friends that are from Iran, and we've known them for about five or six years. Our daughter, our daughters go to school together, and and we do kind of like with Pete. We get together for dinners. We go out together, and and what have you. But he came to visit me in the hospital because uh, I and and before he came, uh, um, he asked if I needed anything. I said jalapenos, fresh jalapenos. So. He brings me this plant with jalapenos stuck in him. And then I start sharing my God story with him. And um, um, now he's not a very practicing Muslim friend, but as I'm having conversation with him, I just start sharing, you know, what the Lord wants me to share. And, and I always start with, I'm a born again Christian. And, you know, and so anyhow, uh, I could just see transformation taking place in his face. Uh, uh, he did not agree to to come to church or anything, and it was interesting because he, when it was his time to talk, because I love to talk and share the Lord, uh, he said, "Well, he says I know that the way I believe, I I don't I don't practice my faith, but I just want to be a good person, and I want to and, and, and I want to help people, and I want to do all these things." And I know that God will honor that, and I will go to heaven. And I said, well, it doesn't quite work that way. And I said, but you are a good person. And, um, and I, I, I didn't go into explaining to him what he needed to do, but I do know that a seed was planted. Uh, I'll shift over to something I didn't tell you about, Pete, with another Muslim person. I've never taken the guts to talk to people about their religion when they're Muslim. Uh, I'm on the phone with Apple Care, and the guy's name is Abdul. Right, so anyhow, Abdul explains to me how his faith works, which is very much like the way I was raised Catholic, and then I explain to him how my faith works, and that, no, I don't need judgment at the end of it all, that once I've accepted the Lord into my heart as my Lord and Savior, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. So that's my story. Yeah, it was, I, you didn't, I know you didn't have time to talk, talk about it, but it was really amazing because you were asking him what he believed yes. and, and you basically were allowing him to talk, to share with you. So you learned a lot about what the Muslims believe oh, at that time. Oh, yeah, it was, and, it was really, really neat because I've never heard it from them. You know, yeah. I had uh, been to seminars where we talk about bridge, building bridges and so on yeah. and so forth. And uh, it's, uh, and, and that you was were able the to Mormon just, faith. But, yeah, uh, you were able to just walk him through that and be able to just share that 
um, that what he's believing is kind of a workspace and that he has to do totally. certain things to get there. And you're able to share with him the free gift that we have in Jesus and the yes. grace that God gives us and, and all of that. But with that said, we're going to, we're going to close up here a little bit. Um, it today's show is, is really just targeting, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are, uh, maybe by the wayside, or maybe they're like Mauricio and they were going to church, they were doing the different things, but they just never really had an intimacy with the Lord. And and if that's you and you're listening to this and you're saying, yeah, I want that. I want what Mauricio had. I want God to to, to show up and, and to change me from the inside. I want the Holy Spirit in me. Well, if you're saying that, I'm going to tell you this right now, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you're continu continuing to pursue him and position yourself to be in his presence by, by, by reading, by worshiping, by attending, by doing the things, and your heart is turned towards him, I guarantee you that the Lord's going to reveal himself to you and he's going to touch you and transform you. I think the reason why we stay in the, the course of a backslidden state or the, the reason why we stay in a, a, a lukewarm state of mind is because we're not willing to change. We're not willing to adjust our life. We're not willing to, to surrender and say, God, I'm done with this life. I'm done trying to do it my way. I'm done trying to, to fix my problems. I'm done with all of that. And, and knowing Mauricio for these many years, I, I, I've heard his heart many times. I've heard him say the things that he said many times. And, and But deep down inside, Mauricio's heart was saying, I need Jesus and only him. And he kept saying that and he kept saying that. And one day in an affliction that God has given him through COVID, he was able to allow God to just minister to him, to build him up, to touch him, to transform him from the inside out. And now his life is, 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 has meaning. It has more purpose. It has a direction. God's given him another hour, given him another day. And, um, and he sees that. And so if you're listening to this and that is you, you can have that. You can do that. You can reach out to us if you have questions or you're, you're trying to figure out even more what, what's next. And we would love to help connect you with a local, local church and, and love to connect you. But if you're looking, if you're listening today and you're just saying, well, I don't even know if I'm saved. To be honest with you, I was listening to you, Pete and, and Mauricio and Bob, and we don't even know if I'm, I'm saved. I, I, I think that I might be the one that's going to hell. I might be the one that's on the, the wide path and I'm not on the narrow path. And, and, uh, and I want to be on the narrow path and, and maybe that's you. And if that's you, you, you can, you can repent right now. You can change from that direction right now. And, and I would love to just pray with you and, 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 and just, uh, allow you to just make an open proclamation to the Lord. And, and I would just say right now out loud, just, just bow your hearts and just say, God, God, I, I need forgiveness now. I, I think I'm, I'm going the wrong direction and I think that I'm not uh, on the right path. But Lord, I want to know. I want to be saved. I want to have salvation. I want to have the experience that Mauricio had. I want to be able to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit the same way. I want to have new eyes to be able to read your word and your truth. I want to I want to be able to have freedom as Mauricio was talking about from my past sins. I want to be I want to be away from all of that, God. So please, please forgive me, God, for my sins. Forgive me of that, Lord. I want to believe in you. I want to be a part of what you're doing. And so if that's you, just pray that out loud and believe that. And, and, and from there, just the, open the book of John and start reading. Open the word of God and start, start fellowshipping. Find a local Bible-believing church and, and get involved and, and connect there. And, and I'm telling you, the Spirit of God will move in your heart. If you are broken, the Bible says that the ones that come to Him are a broken and contrite spirit. If you're broken and your spirit is, is saying, I want Jesus, then God will enter. God will bring His presence to your life. I guarantee it. He will never leave you and never forsake you. And so with that, if you did give your life, we would love to hear from you. If you go on to Riot Podcast and, and click up on at the top, riotpodcast.co and click at No God at the top, you can... Um, you can go ahead and go down to the bottom and click that I accepted the Lord or I repented of my sins and fill that out and can get in contact with us. And we would love to just reach out to you. We would love to just get connected with you and connect you with a local church and, and answer any questions and, and give you some material to help get you on your way. 
Um, but uh, Bob, what's your thoughts? Any last words on this? Yeah, Mauricio, what an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that with us. I, I wanted to share something that jumped out while you were telling your story. And there's there's right. so many amazing parts of it. But one thing that really stood out to me as you're you're laying in a hospital bed fighting COVID, which is attacking your lungs, twice you said God came in and filled up your chest. Heal, healing you of what the world, what this disease is trying to kill you of. God comes in and the way, even the way you said it, your body puffed up and everything. God comes into your chest. Man, what an amazing God we serve. So good. So good. Yes. You have any final words? Yeah. Mauricio, any other last thoughts? You know, that's really interesting that you point that out because I hadn't really made that connection because that's what I was there for. I just thought it was filling me with the Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, thank you for sharing that because it is, uh, it, it was a double whammy and, uh, and uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's all I can say. And, and may all the glory go to him. Well, that's the perfect way to end the show right there. Guys, you know, we love you. We appreciate you. Mauricio, thank you for being on the show. Pete, have a wonderful week. Christine and uh, Christian, Anna, we love you guys. Thanks for everything you do in the background. And listeners, we cannot wait to come to you again next week. So make sure you check us out on YouTube if you're listening to the riot, uh, listening to the podcast. And I ran out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> have an amazing week of worship, guys. We love uh, you. I'll leave you with this, Titus 3, 5. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration, the renewal of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you guys. Have a great week. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.